In this lesson, we're going to calculate percentage increase and decrease and use the picking number strategy on percentage problems. There are two basic types of percentage increase questions on the ACT. The first will ask for the result when some value is increased or decreased by a given percentage. These questions might ask for a new price, population, or temperature after the value has been increased or decreased by a certain percentage. The second type of percentage increase question will give us two values and ask us to calculate the percentage by which the original value has changed. So let's jump right in and solve a problem that asks us to find a new population after a percentage increase. The population of Glenarm increased 9% last year. If the population was 230,000 at the start of last year, what was the population at the end of last year? The answers represent the values for Glenarm's population after the percentage increase. Let's use a percentage increase formula. The new value equals the old value plus the percent increase divided by 100 times the old value. The old value is 230,000 and the percentage increase is 9%. If you use your calculator, you'll input 230,000 plus 9 divided by 100 times 230,000. You get 250,700 for the population at the end of the year, and that's choice C. The only difference between the formula for percentage increase and percentage decrease is whether you're adding or subtracting. So if the problem from before had said that the population of Glenarm had decreased 9% last year from 230,000 at the start of the year and asked what the population was at the end of last year, we would instead use the percentage decrease formula and substitute 230,000 in for the old value and 9 in for P, the percentage decrease. Now, we'll enter these numbers into our calculator, starting by inputting the old population, which is 230,000 minus 9 over 100 times 230,000. We find the new decreased population would be 209,300. Okay, we've learned how to increase or decrease a value by a certain percentage in order to arrive at a new value but some ACT problems will give two values and ask by what percentage do the numbers differ? That's when we can use the formula P over 100 equals new minus old over old. Let's use this formula on an ACT question. If the senior class at Greenville High School contained 120 students last year and increased to 132 this year, by what percentage did the number of students in the senior class increase? A is 10%, B is 15%, C is 20%, D is 22%, and E is 25%. We're going to use the formula P over 100 equals new minus old over old. The new value is 132. The old value is the number of students in last year's senior class, 120. Plug those numbers into the equation and we get the equation P over 100 equals 132 minus 120 over 120. After we do that subtraction, we have P over 100 equals 12 over 120. If we cross multiply, we get 120 P equals 1200. Dividing each side by 120, we get P equals 10%, which if we look at our answer choices is choice A. Knowing these percentage equations will help you solve both percentage increase problems and decrease problems, but picking numbers when possible can get you to an answer faster. And, pro tip coming at ya, generally the best number to pick for percentage problems is 100. Let's try the strategy on an ACT problem. A number A is four times as large as half of a number B. If A and B are non-zero, A is what percent greater than B? A is 20%, B is 25%, C is 50%, D is 100%, and E is 400%. Let's pick a number for one of the variables. Since it's a percentage problem, we'll use 100 for B. The problem says that A is four times as large as half of a number B. Since B is 100, half of 100 is 50, and four times 50 is 200. So A is 200. Now the question asks, A is what percent greater than B? We'll use the formula for finding percentage difference. Since the question is asking us what we need to do to B to get A, 
we can say the old value is b and the new value is a. Plugging the values b equals 100 and a equals 200 into the equation, we get p over 100 equals 100 over 100. We can cross multiply to get 100p equals 10,000. Dividing both sides by 100, we find that p equals 100%, which is choice D. Now you're ready to solve any percentage increase or decrease problem you see on the ACT. Beyond the ACT, these are skills that will come in handy in your real life. This is because figuring out increases and decreases in percentages allows you to measure change. And change is what makes life interesting, right? Although we're at the end of this lesson, your work isn't done. Try solving some practice problems to solidify your learning.